Right, welcome back to the Jackwood Football Podcast. It's that time of the month, in football terms, that is. I'm joined with Tom <laughs> for the reflections, this time, of course, on the month of September. Tom, how are you doing, mate? Oh, God, I've... Um... This might be a little bit too personal for the podcast, but I've been battling my own battles, not myself personally, but with, with that exact thing in the last 24 hours. I'll leave that up to interpretation. I'm good, mate. Welcome to you at home as well. We're delighted to be back doing these and we are both talking about our football clubs being amazing. So who doesn't love a bit of that? Yeah, well, we should say there's going to be lots of conversation. If you've watched these before, you'll know that they are very, very relaxed. They have a lot of conversational aspects to them. Some of them related to football and League One. Some won't be, but that's sort of the, the roll of the dice you get here on these monthly reflections. But it's also a time that we can have a bit of a chat to each other and sort of go into detail on some other topics as well, which is really exciting. Let's touch on, well, I was going to say the elephant in the room, but two clubs are doing quite well that, you know, you've already mentioned there. But let's touch on Pompey first and foremost. It's been a very good month we said at the end of the last reflection that september was going to be quite a defining month and you, if you know you know why i'm sort of sighing as i said the word defining because i think it is very very early days but it is true it was a very tough fixture list for pompey over the course of september you've battled through and you've tom i mean you can explain further i think you can sort of walk away from september pretty pleased with the outcomes well when you take 13 points from 15 you can can't you um i mean that's that's pretty much the the long and short of it really and and that tells you everything you need to know i we we get ready for these reflections and we both do our independent little bits of research during the day and i had a chance to look through some of the thoughts that i'd offered to you when we last spoke last month and i'm actually quite impressed by some of the calls that i made i spoke about our control you spoke about our control on your last reflection uh, which will be a couple of days ago now it's still something you could very much associate with this Pompey side of course I also said word for word I'm going to quote myself I know we love a quote the title is probably a quote of this video it will um, be. yeah th this is the quote Jack you're going to love this if Messino can turn draws into wins we have a side capable of achieving what we aim for this season and uh, you'd say you've done that and I'm happy that I was pretty much bang on the money with that. Yeah, I also spoke about being excited to see what Paddy Lane can do now he was back in the side. And he's actually probably been top three of our most important assets so far. Um, well, definitely in the month of, of September. And I mentioned crowbarring Sadie into the team, albeit he hasn't had as many minutes as he would have wanted to in September. But the impact he's made has been really clear and important to the team. And finally, off the back of a disappointing, um, of being disappointed by Pompey in August, I said, very tough, this is another quote, I said, very tough September ahead. However, it will be very typical of Pompey to find form when we least expect it. We'll see what happens. And lo and behold, Jack, here we are. And I told him not to read the well. notes and I wanted his reaction to that. Um, and there you go. I mentioned Bishop playing in a different postcode. That's obviously been put to bed. Uh, he's been a lot more. One of two things has happened, really. One, he's been a lot more involved and managed to, to get him involved in, in attacking phases of play. The other thing is, of course, goals have been coming from all over the pitch. So the lack of output from Bishop has perhaps been not masked because I don't think it's a negative thing. But the lack of his involvement in the goals has maybe been... I don't want to say overshadowed either. I want a positive term to describe something that's relatively negative. But um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, Jack? goals are coming from goals are coming from other areas, and you're not and you're not reliant on one one individual. No, I think maybe in, in previous years, I think last season you were I say overly reliant. Goals did come from elsewhere, but Colby Bishop was your main source of goals. And of course, as a striker, you want him to be the main source of goals. You don't want to, like you say, you are almost turning what is a negative on face value into a positive, but it doesn't have to be a total negative. You can find positives within a negative. Like you're learning things. It's more of a, it's like a mental health lesson now, isn't it? But, it is, yeah. you know, you are right in saying that you haven't got to be over reliant on, on an individual and just think Tom if things click even further you've got goals from coming from, from other individuals like Paddy Lane Gavin White hopefully can hit the round, ground running Kamara can continue his form etc and then you add Colby Bishop's 20 plus goals that we expect from that type of player look where you could be you know, you, know, you can imagine that your side's going to be hitting some top numbers for goals Say and Yankee goals as well are. Don't forget and those got, two. Exactly. He's coming yeah. up from injury. I believe he's in full training, I think, today. Hey, so, well, today, very, very good. Like that yeah. from you, mate. Very good. Um, yeah, Learning both of those that. are back training now, so that's good. Uh, yeah, overall, very delighted with how things are. There's, of course, the conceding element to Pompey's game right now. We spoke about it on T-Lot the other day, and it hasn't been an issue of yet, but I said it in the video on Saturday away at Wigan. There is going to be a time where Pompey go a goal or two down and aren't going to be able to recover from it, and we're going to really kick ourselves that, that we can't stay, not stay in games for longer, because 
because I never felt like I don't actually feel like we haven't been either in the game or controlling the game so far this season. Maybe there are elements of the Bristol Rovers game perhaps the opening half an hour against Peterborough. But other than that, I think we've been really, really good. All of this, as you mentioned there, without Cassini Yengi, Sadie's been out for large parts. Anthony Scully's out with a long-term issue. Zach Swanson's been unavailable due to personal loss, and we continue to send him all the very best for that. And the always dependable and brilliant Conor Ogilvy. So loads of talent to still come back in. And I feel, as a result, Jack, loads to come from John Messino's Pompey. Well, let's hope so. I think identity is, is something that we spoke about a lot with Pompey last month and i think we are seeing an identity i, I sort of if you want to f- f- find out more about the identity and the, the controlling identity that i think Massino is trying to build i definitely recommend the roundup that went out yesterday for as of us recording this now on monday it'll be the one on sunday the latest one for you or maybe not because there's a maybe midweek, not so there's a midweek game so you could have one on wednesday it's the one from the sunday the saturday fixtures lucky so we I, are mate look all this content I know it's uh, well. I'm trying my best, aren't we? We just hit 6k. Thank you very much for that, by the way. I should have said that Congratulations. earlier. Congratulations! Congratulations! So we are on a bit of a roll right now, and hopefully we can continue that. And same with Pompey. Hopefully they can continue that because I know that a lot of people think that I don't like Pompey, and it's a bit of a joke on T lot. But you know, you always want your friends and, and your mates that you know. Of course, like we, we work with each other a lot on these type of things. But off camera, believe it or not, we are friends. So you do want your mates to be <laughs> successful in, in some way. Um, <laughs> But yeah, and I would 100% want to carry on with your point on tougher opposition. We're now seeing more of a Messino Pompey, which I think is really good. I think it's becoming more clear what he wants to do. And it's like you say, in Pompey fashion, of course, it's a tough period of games in which we're seeing that more clearly. So, and that can only be a, a big thing. Maybe the almost the expectation and the difficulty of games are meaning that you've got to find that identity sooner rather than later. And you, and you have done. It's been um, ultimate control and dominance throughout. And again, we're talking about some top divisions, sorry, top teams in this division that we expect to be up there come the end of the season and probably still will be and that's credit to Pompey's fantastic September let's touch on another club and not just the other the club that is the elephant in the room you'd argue but there are some others as well we are moving into the which sides have impressed us most this month so far but we're not talking about Oxford they are and they are one of these they oh are, right I, think I see that's how these. you're gonna do it I thought Plus, we were gonna open with Pompey and Oxford no, well, we can. We are. We're going to go to Oxford now, but there are other clubs that are going to be in that in that category. I don't want people to think that we're only going to speak about those two because we're not the only clubs that have impressed. We've done well, but other clubs have also shown that they are, I think, getting ready for business in League One. We're only ten games in, of course, for for some nine for others. But let's touch on Oxford. Um, in fact, Tom, let's come to you first on it oh, because I think crikey. that's. I don't know. Maybe we can spice it up a little bit. You know, we come to Pompey, you straight away. Maybe we could change it up a little bit. I'll say my line that I'll go into, de- get into more detail in just a second, but I've been very impressed. I'm very excited. We've done extremely well. We're second in the league and with our game in hand, we would go top. But of course, I think right now you've got to look at it at face value and say that it's been a very good start to the season and a good September as well. I said this to you on the phone earlier on. I said, I, I don't want me to sit here and go, oh, Pompey are amazing and so are Oxford. I think you, you have literally matched us. If not, your, your points per game is better than us, very slightly. Obviously, there's that lack of the one game. We've played one game more, so you would say, yeah, that's it's always going to be the case. But the, the thing that did it for me, and it's not just because I saw a, another Pompey fan comment in one of your videos about it, because I was thinking it at the time as well, we went to Stevenage and really struggled. We looked second best for a large period of that game. Couple of chances. There's one big chance through Abu Kamara in the first half. But other than that, yeah, there was referee injuries, whatever. It's a bit of an itty bitty game. But ultimately, we did not do enough that day to deserve anything out of the game. I think we were deserving. And I actually said this on the last reflection that we did together. We were deserving for just about a point, if not maybe even slightly less. You boys turn up to the Lamex do them and tear them a complete new one and there's goal of the weekend from Greg Lee there's some great football from Oxford sold out away and goes mental and it's happy days that for me is the difference right now between Poppy and Oxford I think that is a little bit of a worry not from me to you or whatever because you you said this before you're trying to force an Oxford Pompey derby there just isn't going to be one obviously we want to get one over in you and you want to get one over on us that's absolutely fine but I am a in in terms of a competitive League One viewpoint. I'm a little bit worried that Oxford may well be a side to be. We all know that you're going to be a side to reckon with, given the transfers and and the way in which the manager's conducted himself and gone about his business over the summer and his business so far in in League One. But 
that for me was a bit of a turning point when we couldn't go to Stevenage and get the win. Oxford went one better, in fact, two extra points better and got that 3-1 win. That for me is the difference at the moment, Jack. And I think that's probably an awful lot for you to take actually is that I think there won't be many teams that do. I, I thought it might be the case where you go to Barnsley and beat them and we wouldn't. Luckily, we matched you with that just about. Um, obviously more than deserving to come away with three points based on the first half showing. I thought the same about Stevenage. I thought before we went into it, I was like, if they go there and win, that's that's a little bit of a sort of a, a dagger to the heart from a Pompey point of view because we couldn't. And that's the difference for me at the moment. Yeah, I, I said it in my video. And again, it's sort of contradicting what I said about the defining aspect of it, but it felt like a statement. And I know people mm -hmm. go, it can't be a bloody statement after 10 games or nine games in Oxford's case. But I think it can. And it's not a statement mm -hmm. as in Oxford are going to go up and Oxford are going to win the league and Oxford have made it after nine games. That Not that kind of statement. It's a statement of not many clubs are going to go to Stevenage, go 1-0 down and react like that against yep. such a well-organised Steve Evans side. And we saw a lot of, we, we saw the mental side of Oxford squad be a huge part of that result because going one nil down against any opposition but especially that football club away from home showed a lot of character and I think again we're talking about re again resilience and character within that young group of players which is really exciting to see but you stretch that across the whole of September we've been again we've been phenomenal and I'm happy to say that and I'm also I don't really believe in, in jinx too much because the football isn't you know that, that that's a it will come back and bite me on the back because I'm sure it will. But I, I, I do generally believe if you carry on playing like we are right now, we are going to be a side that are going to cause problems at the top end of the League One table. And that's not me making a bold prediction. That's looking at what I can see and what I have seen so far and looking forward to what can continue. I would say this, Tom, and this is really interesting. It's amazing how expectations can change and season goals can change once the first ball is kicked or one, you know, a yeah. few games have, have been played. I don't want Oxford to, and, and take this the right way, I don't want Oxford to waste a good start now. And it's dangerous, it's bold, some people might not agree with it, but there are not going to be many seasons where you play nine games and come away with 21 points. That is a yeah. that is an exceptional any point good start. In, the, in the campaign, yeah. So it's an exceptional building block, it's an exceptional starting position, and a serious promotion challenge wasn't really expectation at the start of the season. We had a good window, I didn't get us in the top six because I thought, look at last season, we were utterly I dreadful. Did. But, I know you did, but you, I think we both had a conversation about we're gonna if we are going to achieve anything like that, we've got to go up. I think seventeen positions in quality, sixteen positions in quality, and that's not easy whatsoever. And integrate a lot of players that we signed in the summer, fantastic players, but we have to integrate them no matter the ability. But after such a strong start to the season, this group of players have set this bar quite high. And again, that's not throwing expectation on these players because they've been great, but. I don't want us to look back and go, those first 10 games we picked up, well, first nine games we picked up 21 points. So we're now sort of looking back and going, what went so horribly wrong? And yeah. if we don't, if we're not in contention come the end of the season and carry on playing like that, then something has dreadfully gone wrong. But you would do a Pompey of last season in that case. You do a Danny Cowley's top of the league in the start of at the start of October and then it all falls apart. So yeah, and, and I think it applies to both our clubs is and there'll be people in the comments right now, I'm sure, who may have even written a comment along these lines, but we're fully aware that it's now, and you said it in your reflections, we're into double figures just for League One. That's not lost on us. Very aware of that. I think we're, we're both just enjoying the football right now and doing... I had a little uh, Twitter conversation with your mate Hancock Analysis earlier on today, and we were saying let's take it game by game. Why not enjoy the ride while you can? And, and you do it on a game by game basis. The argument is, well, well, well you know, you, you obviously got to look at, I think uh, doing so, I think it's 22 out of a possible 33 points taken from a, a Pompey point of view. And you're, you're just, uh, no, you're even less than that, aren't you? Yeah, you dropped you've six played, points so you've far. Played a game. Yeah. So, the remarkable records and runs where whichever way you look at it whether it comes to the back end of a season right in the middle in the christmas period whatever mm. still great and still should be celebrated but there is a long way to go i'm not going to say the sky's the limit i don't want to do anything stupid like i did last season and the seven seasons before that when we didn't do this podcast but we have all been feeling it as a pompey fan or and you boys will, will also be in the same breath thinking well look where we were last season so let's not get too much on our high horses let's just be grateful for the ride that we're enjoying so i think we're in a similar boat on in that regard anyway Absolutely. i feel like we've waffled let us waffled, dream waffled. everybody let us yeah, dream let's That's dream the... 
<laughs> that's the title sorted. Thank you very much. You so go. let's um, let's move on to another club because it's not just the Oxford Pompey show. We probably spent about a quarter of an hour speaking about them, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm I'm fine to do that. I think sometimes you have got to enjoy I'm football. People well. say people say that you shouldn't do that, but ultimately, you know, let's put it that way. We had a lot of Pompey chat last season when it started going wrong. It's sort of slightly less and rocks, but we hardly had any. So um, <laughs> let's enjoy it now, shall we? Um, Wickham Wanderers have done a fantastic, fantastic job so far. Tom, I don't know who's on your list. I think I, I did look at it, but I've forgotten. Um, but Wickham are on mine. You can, I think you've got a few other names in there as well. Yes. You talk about Wickham. I'm very worried about tomorrow night and you'll know yeah. by the time you see this, how that went. But that's, uh, mm. yeah. It was, oh, fuck. I've just dropped my phone. Sorry. Um, we, I was so sorry, Mike, to cut that bit out. I was saying to uh, to my dad earlier on, we're delighted with 13 points out of a possible 15. Wickham have got 12 out of 15. So, you know, you're just heading into that game thinking, oh my word, this could go horribly wrong, couldn't it? Are we beginning to see the intentions of Wickham under Bloomfield? That's the question I'd ask you because with Wickham and Bloomfield, I was a little bit, when he was so disappointed, it was one of those where it was very clear Ainsworth wanted to move on to QPR for, after a long, long time. But they wanted to keep the culture that Gareth Ainsworth had created at that football club and bringing in someone like Bloomfield, who was there before, was the club captain under Ainsworth and Wickham for a long period of time. That made total sense. The question was, has he got the required experience? Is he somebody that can come in and hit the ground running? I think we saw quite a wobbly Wickham the start of the season there's a lot of change over the summer bringing in a, a completely different set of players the culture was the same but I think we're seeing already the start of football isn't the same there's a big yeah. difference in that but we saw a lot of players come in we saw a change in personnel in terms of the style of these players and the stylistic elements of the attributes these players had there's a game recently I think it was the most recent game Carlisle 60% possession Wickham had now that is unheard of you know Wickham under Ainsworth would not have 60% possession it would be the other way around they would have 40% possession they'd soak up an opposition who would dominate the game and they'd hit them on the break and play extremely direct with not many passes in a sequence that's the way that yep. um that Ainsworth would want his Wickham side to play and that worked fine I mean they, they got promoted with it out of League One and were constantly a problem for so many football clubs but that isn't what Bloomfield wants to do four wins in five in September they lost to Charlton I would say that loss to Charlton is disappointing but it was Appleton's first home game as a manager so there was a lot of hype around that Charlton side and Appleton in particular at Charlton you still want to win that game of course but that is something to bear in mind four wins from five is still fantastic but maybe we are starting to see Bloomfield get going with this Wickham side and if we are he's had a really good September I've been impressed by Wickham I got a lot of stick by not quite putting them in my I think I got them in the I still had them in my my revised predictions around mid-table I could be wrong they really could push on because so far they've or during this month they've been they've been a really really good outfit and they're looking to take games you know with with real control and we've used that word quite a lot with Pompey and there are similarities with Wickham right now they want to dominate the game and Bloomfield, he, he's getting things ticking right now. Tom, what have you thought? I mean, Tom, go to the other clubs. I think Wickham, you know, we want to sort yeah. of stretch out this conversation with lots of other clubs, yeah, but yeah. I'm sure you agree Wickham has done well. Um, yeah, I'm not going to repeat anything you just said, but it, it to me, Wickham just slightly feels like a changing of the guard that's taken a little bit too long than they thought it would do, and now you're starting to, to reap the benefits of that. So uh, that's good to see. Another shout-out is for Steve Evans, of course, in his... Stephen inside, who have already mentioned that you went and turned them over on Saturday um, and excluding that defeat to Oxford, they would have remained unbeaten in September had they not lost that game. So that, I think, tells you a lot. We were talking about Stephen Inch impressing in the first roundup that we did of the, of the months that we do here on the channel in August. They've continued to do so. It's not just a one month blip and outlier from a Stevenage point of view, I don't think. I think they are here to sound like Rory Jennings again, but upset the establishment of League One. And I am sure that they will continue to do so. Steve Evans knows exactly what he wants to do. So do his players. And yeah, really impressed by by what's going on there. And I, I think they, of course, the beneficiary from a, a League One set of teams and cropper teams that aren't particularly fantastic this season or aren't as many fantastic teams as we've seen of late but to come up from League 2 and achieve what they're achieving so far this season I think you can only give them massive credit and uh, that's exactly what I want to do yeah, other clubs as well. I think Peterborough have been have been pretty strong. Charlton needed to sort of get going. I think Michael Appleton now is, is is shoring things up. Clean sheets have been sort of his focus. They were shipping too many goals, and we've seen Charlton be much improved defensively, and that, and that needed to happen. I think Barnsley as well. You know, I, I, again, I, I I think Barnsley have, have ticked along nicely. They're sort of getting some decent results, frustrating at the weekend losing to Blackpool. But sort of other than that, you look at Barnsley and, and maybe think that 
they're going to be well and truly in that conversation as, again, mm-hmm. that football club should be in Sky Bet League One. But there's a wobble at the start of the season and question marks were sort of really hovering over that situation. I think their window wasn't great. People are going to disagree with that. I think they lost some really key players. They made some good money, but they weren't able to spend it. They sold, was it Kitching on the final day with about an hour to go and, and couldn't really reinvest that money. If they really do invest that money in January, then Barnsley's second half of the season could be as good as who knows what their first half of the season could be. So I have to wait and see on Barnsley, but I have been impressed in September. They should be given credit for it. Um, also, I was going to say, we shouldn't, I don't want to give too much credit to Fleetwood, but I think they've, they've picked up at the end of September and Napa's been watching this probably and thinking that we, we should mention it. Let's be honest, it hasn't been a fantastic September. They did lose for the most of it, but the last two results have been much better. And um, you know what? It might be the September that turns their season around. Let's hope so. Quick word on Fleetwood, Tom. <laughs> Um, I'm going to jury's out for me still on Fleetwood. Uh, they, he was, Napa was mentioning the fantastic talent. I'm completely with him when we were discussing it on that League One podcast over the weekend. You can't go down with a team with Jack Marriott, Jaden Stockley in it. You just can't. That's, that's not, that's League One, if not better for me, in, in my view, with those two attacking talents. So they've got some real, um, I think they said they've got some real promise with promise. That'd be a horrendous cliche to use. Um, he, he also goes on about Jay Lynch and how much he loves him too. So there's some good talent at Fleetwood and I'm pretty sure that they aren't going to be down there for too long, hoping obviously for his sake um, to go back to what you said about you wanting your mates to do well in League One because it's what we're all after. It's a lovely feeling when we all want at the weekend and we want more of those we're not going to get them but we want as many of those as we can um yeah Fleetwood let's see Let, let's let keep the positive energy about them from the external point of view um we'll know the result by Cheltenham by, uh, at Cheltenham sorry by the time you see this and uh hopefully they're kicking on and, and motoring up that table well, we saw, again, Cheltenham is a massive game for Fleetwood, by the way. And it's for mm. Cheltenham as well. They're going to score a goal. We'll come to Cheltenham in just a minute. But we've seen quite a few appointments in in the month. And yes. I'm gonna, this isn't in the running order. And I actually can't remember exactly who it is. But I know Clark's been appointed at Cheltenham. Johnson yeah. was appointed at Fleetwood. Appleton was appointed in September for Charlton. Yeah. Is that all of them? Is that three? That's it. Yeah, that three. is three. We know Johnson has, in the, he, he, I don't want to say turned it around, but he's got the first result and he's got the first win. So he's won a game, Wardy. Come on. I know. And I don't want to do, I don't want to do a here and say they're going to go on a playoff charge, but they've, they've started, they've started to look better, which wasn't too difficult. Yet to see um, Clark with Cheltenham. I think he said in it, I read briefly a statement or a, a quote from his press conference today that he's admitted there's a lot of work to be done and fair play to him. He's, he's, I mean, I think a lot of people could have seen that, but it's interesting to see that a manager's come in and, and been pretty open and listening, thinking that's going to be a difficult side to turn around. Let's move on just to on, Cheltenham. On Clark, just yeah, quickly. Yeah. Um, on. There is a stat that stands out to me. I don't know where I saw it, but... He left three of his four clubs in a higher league than he found them in. All the fans that he's ever been un- been over the stewardship of or had under his stewardship, they all love him to pieces. And I think he's he's got an awful lot of intelligence. He has that, and, and he's already come out and mentioned that in the, in the press conference that you're talking about there. You spot and identify an issue quickly, deal with it, move on, let's all move forward. I think that's a top-tier appointment for that football club. And it I makes agree. the... League One relegation conversation, if we can even talk about that with 10, what, 10, 11 games played, 9, 10, 11 games played, even more interesting. So, yeah, it, really looking forward to seeing how that one develops. And I wish uh, Daryl Clark all the very best for that one. But Cheltenham have been underwhelming, unfortunately. And we, oh, are, we will yeah, speak on. Yeah. You've written Cheltenham down and, and, on one of your lists. And to be fair, as much as we can, we can read into the positivity, and we should, we're, we're a positive double act, I'd say, most of the time when our teams are winning. But Cheltenham, it's hard to be positive, positive, isn't it? I think you, we're trying to find. I mean, they've had the worst start in the history of. A, is it a League One club or an EFL? It's record breakingly bad start. <laughs> it's very bad. I mean, no goals. No goals after. I mean, we say only ten games, but ten games is. I mean, it's a chunk of the season, isn't it? I mean, ten games is quite a lot of games. I mean, ninety times times ten is what nine hundred plus added time. We're speaking about a lot of minutes without a goal here, um, Tom. They've concerned me. They've concerned you. They have. I mean, I was going to say why. I think we all know why. I just can't believe that the one solemn, seldom point that they have to their name, without getting on the Fratton Park high horse, is at Fratton Park. They've lost so that many must be games. Kicking yourself. No, well, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> well, I, well I, I joke, and I also <laughs> you, think. Uh, 
Imagine if you wind up. Imagine if you'd won that game, and you really should have won that game. Oh well, if you get, it's a classic. If you get one, you get loads. And we had about three different referees that day. For, sorry, four or five different linos. It felt like, and we had played twenty-one minutes of added time. Mm. But anyway that yeah that's just bizarre Pompey top of the table sitting pretty having won all these games gone away to Barnsley beating Peter at home gone away to Wigan Derby away put on a real showing and then Cheltenham at home is the one that you drop points in so um yeah I I I think it's a it's a really I really feel sorry for Matty I think it's a, it, he keeps going home and away bless him I saw his video against Lincoln away did Peterborough on a Tuesday a couple of weeks ago and got turned over and it, it just must be such a negative insanity for them right now luckily they have this shining light in Daryl Clark who's going to hopefully come in and, and steady things in that part of the world as I said wishing them absolutely all the best and I hope it, it to, well you know when um what's that song things can only get better and you, you know when it's that bad that you, it can't get any worse that yeah. is is how they're feeling so yeah best of luck to them and, and hopefully fortunes turn around sharpish shrewsbury winless and goalless through the month of september i actually think cheltenham have done shrewsbury a favor because cheltenham have been so bad and everyone's speaking about the fact that they haven't scored a goal since the start of the season we've forgotten that shrewsbury have actually also not scored a goal in not September. on the Jack Board Football Podcast, you know. Yeah, we you don't, don't get away with it, Shrewsbury. Yeah, we unfortunately, we're like you know, this is like parents' evening. You know, you thought you got away <laughs> with it, but we've had to come and tell you pretty straight up in front of your parents. You've just been as bad as your mate. So yeah. Shrewsbury, also not as good. Now I've definitely, definitely, I've, I've, I've jinxed it there, haven't I? I don't believe in jinx. We've got them on Tuesday night. Now, go no, come on, Shrewsbury, <laughs> stay with me, stay with me. Hmm. They've Cheltenham have been bad. Shrewsbury during the month of September have been very bad as well. And I do worry about them. Matt Taylor could be one under pressure heading into the international break. And again, if they beat us, they he probably won't be. But I was worried about them going into the season. I think they had a really strange summer. The big one being losing Steve Koch, who was a, a real cult hero at, at Shrewsbury. And him leaving was a, a big Still blow. And I, I felt position. really, really strange. They brought in Matt Taylor, who, to be honest... <laughs> It's underwhelming. He might turn it round. He might. He might be a absolutely fantastic manager for Shrewsbury. He might look back on on this and and think that this is one of the worst calls I've made. But I'm pretty confident. Opinions are opinions, and I can change my opinion. I don't think I'm going to be going back on that one. I don't think it's a very good appointment. I think he is in. A, he is going to be in a bit of trouble if they don't turn things round. They're going to be in a a bit of a dogfight if again this form continues. I think Carlisle also do concern me. Um, I think you wouldn't put Shrewsbury and, and and Cheltenham in the same boat as Carlisle necessarily because I think. Carlisle come into this league with little expectation or smaller expectation compared to those clubs. Of course, they want to stay up and Paul Simpson is a very, very experienced manager that will want the success with his club as we, again, we know he will do. He's got a good record of doing that. But again, they've, they've got to pick it up. They're going to get drawn into it naturally. I mean, I look at their month at the moment, they're, they're winless in the, in the last four. They've lost their last two. Again, their fixtures haven't been sort of totally nice. I mean, look at, you know, Lincoln's not a nice game of football recently and, and we know they're going to be in and around that competition, in and around the, the top end of this competition and maybe we're sort of, you've got to look at Carlisle against your Northamptons and maybe your Cheltenham's going forward. That's what they're going to be competing with. They've got to be difficult to beat against those sides and I'm, I'm sure they will be. They've got the manager to do it but we should mention they haven't been firing all cylinders as much during September. Quick touch on Reading and Wigan as well. Tom, you said this in the sort of planning of this video. It's important to mention that they haven't had great months, but there are underlying circumstances. I'm sure we're all aware of, but we should mention it again. Um, points deductions sometimes are a bit misleading. We sort of go, right, Reading are going to start the seeds with minus 15. It wasn't the case, but they just keep getting docked three points across the campaign. So you don't really know when it's going to stop, do you? It's tough to sort of judge that. Yeah, it's, I mean, we, we roll these into one and I think actually we could probably skip through club surprise package because we've mentioned Wickham and, and Stevenage yeah. there and just crack on with player and, and manager. But yeah, just briefly on the, the ownership problems, we went to a, I want to say a half empty DW Stadium on Saturday um, with, and, and even your dad pointed out to you that Wigan, the attendance there is pretty horrendous and the circumstances there, both Reading and Wigan, they're both very similar in terms of the zeitgeist to the football club, really. It's a, a sign of the times where attendances are taking a real hit. They're throwing tennis balls onto the pitch at the Medeski. Um, I think Reading's situation is far more perilous at the moment than, than Wigan's. Wigan's kind of feel like they've been sorted out and are kind of just through the end of the storm and, and getting back things back to as normal as they possibly can. 
Whereas Reading feel like they're very much in the eye of it at the moment and there needs to be something serious done because, you know, wages aren't being paid. Those points deductions as it stands are just keep keep coming and coming and it's really disappointing from a from a, a point of view they've uh they've just the tickets have come out or they're coming out on wednesday for pompa they've given us just under three thousand uh, for the away game nicely priced i thought they were going to rip us off for 30 quid but they've done a bit of a discount which is nice um that's the only real shining light of what is a really dire situation so we're keeping a keen eye on that as uh league one fans and i'm sure a lot of other clubs are but yeah set, sending all our best to to reading and wigan fans who maybe less so wigan but reading fans who don't deserve to be in this position and are completely helpless other than doing everything they can to lobby for the betterment of their football club and, and we'll just try and uh yeah i don't we can't really do very much only hope that they uh they get this guy who's clearly a real problem to them out of the club as soon as they can and, and get someone who, who properly can can run things on a on a day-to-day basis from upstairs yeah tough times those football clubs and i think with reading it's slightly different like you say reading sort of feel as though they're they're in the midst of what is a very very dark situation we're gonna like you say sort of pulling their way out of it i mean technically on the pitch they have pulled their way out of the deduction they're back onto to positive points it's about going again now napa's made a good point and i've sort of given my opinions on Wigan. i don't think they were very good against pompey i don't think they've been very good this month and they started so well and i haven't been very impressed with the performance level maybe i've been slightly harsh on that but I felt as though Wigan are trying now to have to sort of mentally prepare themselves for an, another push, another goal, and that is now to really push up the table. Because, of course, you can have a great start getting to positive points if you do have a dedu- deduction, but you can still go down, remember, as well. So you've got to get back into it. You, you know, you, the celebrations can't be the positive point celebration. The celebration's got to come at the end of the season when you move out of what could have been a much um, different campaign. So let's move over to Player of the Month. Normally we do surprise package and the name of that makes Tom love. I don't know why really. It sort of it does. It's, it's just, just a Just saying Jack's name. surprise package just, I don't know, wants it, yeah, mm. it's there. It's a, yeah, anyway, sorry. We on. touched on the, I think if we could have put candidates forward, I think Wickham have done well. I think Stevenage sort of still being up there is a, is a massive credit, but we won't dive sort of heavily into that. We always, the thing is with these sort of conversational videos, we don't have to stick to a running order. We will do surprise no. package next Mix month if there's a surprise, but to be fair, I think clubs of, I mean, if we're going to do a bad surprise package, I think there's some clubs that maybe should be higher than they are, but um, maybe... We don't need to touch on that. Um, player of the month, Tom, you've got two. I've got a, a, a shout in there. I'd agree with the, but I've seen yours. I agree with both of them. So you've written them down and you win. But I've gone with, I've got another shout. I've got a few maybe that, that could be put in the hat. But Tom, have you gone with? A Devante Cole, mate, has four hmm. goals in the five games of September that Barnsley have played, aside from a relatively quiet showing when we went there and of and for the visit of Blackpool on the weekend, just gone. He's had some man of the match performances, so an obvious shout there. I was I was quite sort of fearful of, of what he could do to us on the Tuesday when we went there. I'll be honest with you, I didn't see a lot of him. It wasn't even like he missed a massive opportunity either. I I just I was a bit disappointed really because I was looking forward to seeing the league's top goal scorer in action, but he just didn't really do it on on the, that Tuesday. So I have very little first hand viewing of it, but uh, from the the other games that he's played in, he's obviously done very well. And and actually the style of some of the goals, both at, away at Cheltenham and away at Northampton, fantastic on the break. So instinctive, powerful, pacey, everything you want from a striker. He's got it all. So, yeah, big shout out for him. And um, for Jiri Okunabiri as well, the big man at Cambridge United deserves a massive mention. He's got the most goals per 19 League One so far this season at 1.64, three goals in four matches for Cambridge this month. That 1.64 goals per 90 actually is a little bit warped by the fact that he's come off the bench a load of times. But still, you know, you can't argue with an impact substitution. Um, you know, Cassini Yengi was the man for us at the very start of the season. He was coming off the bench and providing the goals and, and scoring the penalties, etc., etc. And 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 Fajiri's doing just that. I think he even missed one. So he's doing that well. And he can afford to miss a penalty. So not that that would make you player of the month if you do miss penalties, because obviously you don't want strikers doing that. But I think he's uh, done exceptionally well so far this season in a Cambridge United shirt and could well be the difference between uh, them and and sort of the, the woes of last season and, and hopefully what will be a, a much more enjoyable ride towards the back end of this season for them too. So those would be my two. You've got one that you don't really want to offer up, but you're going to probably say it anyway, I would imagine. Well, I've, actually, I've had a change of thought. I'm surprised. Oh, he's had a put, change. I'm surprised you didn't put a certain Regan Paul in the hat, to be mm-hmm. honest. I think he's a... 
I think he's had a Does good I get month. accused of too much Pompey self indulgence all the time? So. I definitely have him in the conversation. I think he's Brannigan awesome, has to be in there. Rodriguez has sort of stepped up for Ox. Those two names have, have been fantastic. I think even we look at one game, I think Rhodes did a fantastic job since he's joined Blackpool, actually. Yeah. He scored a, a good number of goals. I think he should be in there. I think List has done well for for Stevenage. I think there's a lot of that. Again, Pair of the Month is difficult. If we had to highlight one, I would have to go you know, sort of with, um, again, even Sam Bokes at Wickham. Again, he's done. He stepped up again. We're sort of seeing him sort of, I mean, we're looking at maybe a, a small sample size in the last couple of weeks, but, you know, September's what, four, I think, what, five games played in September? Four or five games for, for some clubs. So, you know, two games is half of the month, isn't it? So if you've done well for half the month, you, you're probably going to be putting that conversation. So yeah, a, a lot of names. I would agree with Devante Carr. I think four, uh, four goals in five games has to be has to be in there. Sometimes we can be a striker uh, biased, and but again, goals win football matches. So Devante Carr will, will win this. But lots of other names, candidates are important. Um, Tom, I'm going to quickly go back on a certain thing. No, actually, I'm going to. We could actually link it sort of in manager. You're going to talk about Derby, aren't you? Yeah, because I want to touch on. A manager, so we'll do it. Manager of the month, really. Um, don't give it Paul some managers manager of manager month, are you? No, I am not, but I think it's a good time to speak about manager yes, situations. I know we absolutely. think about Daryl Clark and the new and the new names. What about the names that have done well and maybe not so well? And managers that are under pressure, maybe we could call it just the, the manager chat. The manager I look chat. at managers under, under pressure. Um, I think Matt Taylor, they mentioned at Shrewsbury, he looks like it could be a, a difficult period for him. Um, Burton, I mean, they've picked up last three games. I think Dino isn't always safe, but I think he probably is okay now. He's, he's really well liked at Burton. Um, I think, again, I'm looking at around there. I think Joey Barton, I mean, he's a manager in conversation, isn't he, recently? I mean, what the uh, We discussed him hell. on the t lob, didn't we? Uh, in probably a little bit more explicit terms than we can on here. But yeah, he's, uh, he's just Back Joey again, Barton doing Joey Barton things. Yeah, so maybe the less said about that one, the better. But maybe he didn't turn up to the man management course. Um, poor, I'd say. I was that didn't really sit well with me that interview. Didn't it? Didn't feel right. Again, I'm, I'm, you know, we're people that will never play at that level ever, never get near that level. So, again, it's easy for us to say. I'd sat say here. you're a cut above it, Wardies, personally. But you know, well, yeah, I've, I could uh, probably walk into that Bristol Rovers yeah, team with Joe Barton. But <laughs> yeah, I, I, but I wouldn't take that shit from Joe Barton. I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, Derby again, again. We, we speak about Derby. We don't have to speak about it. I'm not. We don't like crowbarring conversations in there. There be clubs that don't get a mention. If that's you, we do apologise. We don't. We've got set topics, but we also like to move around a bit. I think manager chat and who's in, who's under pressure, and who's not is a, is a good one. We're going to speak about two managers in a minute that could be put forward for manager of the month that definitely aren't under any type of that pressure. But Paul Warren is. I think he is. Derby fans will, will some will say that he's not. I think he probably is. I think when you walk into a derby expectation that that it does have, and you're not starting strong. I mean, what we talk about, 15 points from nine games. It's not horrendous, but when you compare that to Pompey and Oxford's 22 and 21, mm -hmm. it's not great. And some of the performances are a big letdown as well. Carlisle recently they won that game, but they didn't look great. It was an ugly win, which is fine. You can grind ugly results, but you can't go at home to Cambridge, who have been good. But again, we, we, sometimes we we can fall in the trap of being like, well, Cambridge done well. They have done well, but at the same time, Derby County should be should win that. If they're serious about winning promotion, then Derby should be. You've got to win that game at home. So Paul Warner, I would say, is under pressure. I would say that he needs to turn it around. And it'd be interesting to see when we do this at the end of October, if he still is the manager at Derby. He, he probably Paul Warner's got a good record of, of of turning it on when he needs to and finding a, a good run. I think Derby could go on a. It's, it's two things. It sounds obvious, but Derby could go on an unbelievable run. They could do it. They've got the players to do it. They have been injury hit. That squad is injury hit, but they could still do it. They've got the quality in that team, and they have got a manager that is a specialist of getting teams going. But equally, the carries on the way they are, results wise and performance right wise. There has to be a conversation that he isn't as safe as maybe we thought he would be at the start of the season at this point. But that's how things can change. Tom, quick word on, on Paul Warner, Derby County. Hasn't been quite as plain sailing as we thought for him. No, and again, I don't want to repeat you. 11 significant injuries for Derby County. There are obviously nine league games in. Thompson, Embleton, Bird, Ward, Wilson, John, Jules, Rooney, Hurahan, Elder. If you can even look at pre-season, you could throw Barcazen and Sibley into that conversation too. I know Joe Ward's starting to come back, and I think that there's a, some positive news around some of those players. Um, but equally, when... And you, I'm not... You know, there would be Derby County fans watching this that might think what are Tom and Jack talking about they know absolutely nothing but 
I, I don't want to say I sympathise with Paul Warren, but it, it feels like a very, and I've mentioned it already on this in this video, is a Danny Cowley getting completely done over by a massive injury crisis that he has absolutely no control over. That led to his downfall. I'm not saying the same thing for Paul Warren. What I am saying is that I can see exactly the issues he's having. When you build your transfer window around the majority of those players that I've just let read out to you mm. and they're dropping like flies as they are, he's kind of literally sat there probably in his office going, well, you know, that's horrendously bad luck. And, you know, I'm, I'm obviously really disappointed whether there's question marks over the, the training practices, whether there's question marks over what the players are, are keeping themselves doing in the background. That's mere speculation from my point of view the chances are it's probably just a, a run of really bad nasty ones that you can only really get from uh, a match situation um mm. so yeah what once that clears itself up we we could see you know what what's derby back to full fighting health we, we could see a completely different um outlook on things as you say I, you know there's still a group of really talented players there and there's a fan base to back it up as well so um yeah i, I think the their start won't be what they wanted but it goes back to what we said at the top you know the start is all it is and you know you can you can have a difficult way into a season and still be really profitable as a result can't you so um and equally you can have a great way in and then completely fall apart or, or drop down as as you, as you don't want to and, and you start incredibly well so um yeah two sides to that coin we'll keep an eye on derby and we'll come back next month and, and see how they're doing for definite yeah it's that sort of balance between have they still got the talent in that squad to beat cambridge at home yes should they be playing yeah, better that's true probably but you've got to remember that that squad is being hit by injuries but it's, it's like you say it's, it's like you know it's two sides of a coin isn't it he is being hit by injuries and he is dealing with a squad that is much smaller you, you've got to deal with what you've got on your hands haven't you yeah and managers when exactly. you sign up to being a manager when you sign up to again when you recruit in the summer that that's not unfortunately whether you like it or not managers are going to be judged on what's what's in front of them and yeah, you know and, and derby don't really have the time to sort of go well we didn't got this year because we had a bad patch with injuries i mean mm. that is a that is an excuse and that's a, a valid excuse but it's not one that unfortunately in this day and age in the world of, of managerial industry if you like that, that we currently find ourselves in that's not normally an excuse that sort of gets a lot of slack and whether it should be or it, or it should be that's a uh, Again, it's up for conversation, but it probably definitely isn't down to us. It's down to the owners and the decision that that they decide to make with their their manager that they've appointed or, or they eventually do sack. Let's talk about two managers that should be in the positive conversation that aren't under pressure. I think we might have accidentally, Tom, changed that conversation. Many man, we could just do a, a manager chat. Who's on, who's under pressure and who's not? Two managers that aren't: Liam Manning, John Massinho. And uh, you'd also say as well, Steve Evans nice has done a fantastic Nice little cyclical job. structure to this, isn't there? Where we start with us two and end with us two. Very it's nice, nice, isn't it? It's the last segment of the show, but it gives us an opportunity to not go heavily on the clubs. We've already done that, but speak about the good work of... Well, we'll start with John Messina. He's done all right, hasn't he? Not too badly, yeah. My, uh, I had a conversation with my dad earlier on, actually. Um, literally, just before we started recording downstairs. Mm -hmm. And he said... He's not looking for praise. He's not overboard. He's just getting on with it professionally. And I think yeah. and that's not to sort of detach yourself from any previous regimes that might have been doing things slightly differently. You, you could maybe, if, if you were the most level-headed and neutral Pompey fan in the world, you could say Kenny Jacket had absolutely no character to him and was probably the, the most outdated Pompey manager we've had for a long time. Danny Cowley perhaps went too much on the this is the city of Portsmouth and we're all in it together kind of thing. And John Messino is maybe striking a really nice balance between the two where he is literally got the job in hand, he's getting on with it, doing exactly what he needs to do and he will be judged by what comes out of the end of the season and I think that is why he is and, and if we, we even tried to do a little bit of a oh and then he maybe does a little bit of a fist bump but I think actually that's not really the Messino style I know it's the Manning style and we'll get onto that in a second but that's potentially well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it is really but he doesn't anyway. no we said that earlier didn't we he doesn't actually like it and I think they those two have the sh the same view that actually you know, we're not celebrating promotion here. Maybe we can do a few piss, fist bumps when we're playing in the championship next season. But um, yeah, definitely not now. So that's, yeah. And, and and I think his his results and his track record speak for himself. Jackie's lost four league games since he was appointed Pompey manager. That was January. 21 it's games on beaten, I believe it for Pompey, isn't it? 21 and could be 22 by the time you see this hopefully so you know it's january bad, to october is a long time in football so and it, obviously you've got your summer break in the middle there of course 
but crikey that's quite some doing so massive credit to him he's my shout for manager of the month definitely I, th- I think Liam Manning has to be in the conversation won't go heavily on it and he said about the, the fist bump there's a clip that went a little bit viral on Twitter of Liam Manning doing it in the Steve Ridge away end um it's cool isn't it I think fans I, I, even though even if it isn't even if it is done over the top I think Steve Evans in his interview after classic Steve Evans who isn't actually in the, in the conversation for this I think he's done well for Steve and it's to be still third out of 10 games they, they've been great and I know Steve Ridge fans absolutely love Steve Evans it's a bit like Marmite isn't it I think other, you either mm-hmm. really like him or you don't um, he hasn't got a very good relationship with Oxford he never did do he sort of got into verbal fights with Carl Robinson all the time when he was our manager and he didn't do it with Liam Manning because Liam Manning isn't that type of guy but he did say in his post-match interview Evans that apparently we celebrated or the fans were celebrating like with one promotion um it, him and bitter. John Messina John Messina came out and said that they were terrible on the touchline at Stevenage as well so yeah. they're, they're dark arts there but it's working in it, so it's, it, like it it's, it's not it's not new though is it it's he no. did that he did that at Gillingham and to be fair to me it's worked doesn't it I mean no oh, yeah absolutely he was always Crack a banana play Gillingham play. were always a, a very very t- he is it's like you say, it's a dark arts, not just as a manager in, on the pitch, but he's dark arts off the pitch. What he says and stuff, he doesn't. I bet he might believe everything he says, but I think part of it, he, he is saying it because he wants to get under the skin, and it's sort of a bit of a psychological game. And to be fair to it, 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 it does work. Um, but yeah, Manning's in the conversation. Messino should, I think, Messino will get it. Um, he's still and, calling uh, him Messino. That's his name. No, it's not his name, but it is his, it is his name. Um, and again, uh, even in you know sides that are in the top end, managers will, will get credit and. Yeah, there's been some good results this this um, this month. I've, I've really enjoyed it. I've, I've really enjoyed this conversation, Tom, actually. I Me really too. have. I think we've had, um, we've had some good chat, we should say, as well. You can see more of us on a weekly basis. We do this monthly, but you can watch us weekly. Uh, if you're our patron, you can watch it. But again, you don't have to pay. You could pay. It'd be nice if you did, but you don't have to. We're available on Spotify and all other podcast platforms. For T-Lot, we're joined by Ben, of course, from Cod's Vlogs, and Jake from Channel 72, if he ever uploads again. From where? Channel 72. Um <laughs> Now, if that channel ever comes back to life, <laughs> that would be great. But I don't know if it will. I don't know if it Sorry. will. It's a great. We, we we've got a great community over there. We've got really really good people that sort of listen to that and watch that on a regular basis. We've got some great people that um, seem to like it. So we must be doing something something right. I don't know. We don't feel like we're doing something right. We just sort of sit down as a bunch of lads and, and laugh and joke about football. It's basically like a recorded chat in the pub um around around football but um we live in different parts of the uk so that's slightly difficult to do uh, physically but we do it visually every single week you can watch that and listen to that other than that tom subscribe please do subscribe go and subscribe to tom i'm sure you are already leave a like over 100 likes would be fantastic 100 like i mean to be fair if we can get 150 plus likes we've done really well recently yeah, and the, the support's that. been fantastic but until next time we'll see you well I'll see you very soon but together on the reflections we'll see you in around 28 days time be less for you actually watching this 28 for us recording it <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see I forgot that this isn't live um, it's never been it's only been done live once I don't know why I thought it would it would be but basically we'll see you at the end of the month take care <laughs>